Lesson 6.4 are the graphs of sine and cosine. So here's a little reminder of some of the properties of the sine function y equals sine of x. So the domain is all real numbers. The range is negative 1 to 1. It's odd, which means it has origin symmetry. So sine of the opposite of x is equal to negative sine of x. And it's periodic with a period of 2 pi. So one thing to be careful of when we're talking about x and y here, we're not talking about the x and y on our unit circle coordinate points. X would be our angle measurement, and Y is the output sine ratio. So these are kind of the parent points. I just look at the quadrantal angles for them. So at theta equals 0, sine is 0. At pi over 2, it's 1. At pi, it's 0. At 3 pi over 2, it's negative 1. And at 2 pi, it's 0. And then it repeats that same exact pattern every 2 pi. So here's an example of two periods of the sine function drawn. So this table represents this period. There's also a second period here, and it continues on forever in both directions. If we look at the function y equals negative sine of x plus 2, we can graph this using the parent function of sine of x and our transformations that we've been using all year. So this one, the negative in front, is going to reflect us across the x-axis, and then the plus 2 on the end is going to shift us up 2. So this is the parent function of sine of x, and then you could take this and you can reflect it across the x-axis and shift it up 2. If you're a tabler, here is our parent function table, and then we can apply those transformations from there. So taking everything and reflecting it across the x-axis, because we always do multiplication first, and then shifting everything up to, our new function is going to look like this. Something to keep in mind as well is when we look at the sign is always going to start at its middle or its equilibrium at zero. And a positive sign graph always starts by increasing. So it goes middle, high, middle, low, middle. It's been reflected, so it's going to go middle, low, middle, high, middle. So it kind of follows that same pattern throughout. Here we have our properties from last section for the cosine function, y equals cosine of x. Again, the x we're talking about here is actually our angle measurement theta, and y is actually our output of cosine, so our x over r ratio. Domain is all real numbers, and the range is negative 1 to 1, just like sine. Cosine is even with y-axis symmetry, so cosine of negative x is equal to the cosine of x and it's periodic with a period of 2 pi. So here's our parent function table and our parent graph. This has two periods of cosine. So cosine at theta equals 0, x equals 0 is 1, pi over 2 is 0, pi negative 1, 3 pi over 2 is 0, and then 2 pi 1. So it starts up at its high point, goes decreasing, and then comes back up. And again, this repeats on forever in either direction. Here we have the function y equals cosine of 3x. So go ahead and pause the video and graph this using transformations. So the 3 being multiplied by x is going to horizontally compress our function by 3. So whenever I have that, I always do the inverse for my x's. So I'm going to multiply everything by 1 third. So I get 0 pi over 6, pi over 3, pi over 2, and 2 pi over 3. And then the cosine y coordinates are 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1. So I start at the high point. I go middle, low, middle, high. Make sure at the ends it turns back down and doesn't point up like a parabola because it would repeat again another period. For trig functions, we give some of these transformations specific names. So if we look at y equals a sine omega x or y equals a cosine omega x, this is the lowercase Greek letter omega. Then the vertical stretch or compression, we call that the amplitude, which is the absolute value of whatever a is and it's half the distance between the maximum or the minimum, or the distance from the equilibrium to either the max or the min. The period we've talked about is the distance in x that it takes for one full cycle of y values to repeat. So for an untransformed sine or cosine function, that's 2 pi. If something has been multiplied by x, that adjusts your period. And so we can find the new period of sine or cosine by doing capital T, which we use to represent the period, is 2 pi divided by omega, whatever is multiplied by x. So if we have the function y equals 3 sine 4x, we want to find the amplitude, the period, and then graph this using transformations. For the amplitude, it's the absolute value of whatever is multiplied in front because it's, it's the vertical stretch or compression. Originally, sine goes from negative 1 to 1. So then if we stretch or compress it, that becomes our new amplitude. So our amplitude is 3. For the period, because we're being horizontally compressed by 4, our period is normally 2 pi, but we're going shorter by a factor of 4. So that's why our new period is 2 pi divided by omega, in this case 2 pi over 4 or pi over 2.
So for my graph, I created the table. I started with the parent function. I multiplied all my y coordinates by 3, and I divided all my x coordinates by 4. So then I graph this. Some things to notice is it's actually pretty easy to graph our trig functions, especially when there's not too many transformations, without doing the full table or anything, just based on what we know our amplitude and our period is. So sine normally goes from 1 to negative 1, but if I'm multiplying everything by 3, I now have an amplitude of 3, it's going to go from 3 to negative 3. And then if there's a translation vertically after that, you can move it from there. My period is normally 2 pi, so it normally goes from 0 to 2 pi. My new period is pi over 2, so it's going to go from 0 to pi over 2, and then my other points are half of that, and then the quarters. So half of pi over 2 is pi over 4, half of that is pi over 8, and then the 3 quarter mark would be 3 pi over 8. It's also important to be able to recognize where the period and the amplitude show up on your graph and your table. So if we look at our graph, our amplitude is the distance from our equilibrium to the max of the min, or half the distance from a max to a min. So if I look at my equilibrium, or midline here, the amplitude is the distance up to either the max or down to the min, which is half the total distance from your max to your min. On your table, you can see it between any two of these points because we labeled the equilibrium and the max or the equilibrium and the min. So that distance there is your amplitude. For the period, it's how many x's you travel from where you start to where you end. So I started at 0 and I ended at pi over 2 for this one period of sine, and so that distance is pi over 2. Same thing in the table, because I started with one period of sine here, from where I start to where I end is still going to be one period of sine. So here we have the function y equals negative 2 cosine of pi over 2x. So pause the video, find the amplitude, the period, and graph using transformations. So the amplitude is the absolute value of whatever is being multiplied in front, so we end up with 2. And then the period is 2 pi divided by omega, where omega is what's being multiplied by x. So 2 pi divided by pi over 2, which is going to be 4. The negative in front is going to reflect us across the x-axis, the 2 is going to vertically stretch us by 2, and the pi over 2 is going to horizontally compress us by pi over 2. So if I use the table here, I use my parent function, and then I multiplied everything on my y's by a negative 2 to reflect it and stretch it, and then I multiplied all my x's by 2 over pi, because we always do the reciprocal for it, and I end up with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So my function is going to go from 0 to 4, and then my points in the middle are going to be half of that, and then the quarters, if you're kind of doing it without the table. And instead of going from 1 to negative 1 because of my amplitude, I'm going to go from 2 to negative 2, and then there's no vertical or horizontal translations. The negative reflects it. Cosine normally starts at the top, but because it's been reflected across the x-axis, it's now going to start at the bottom, increase, and then decrease. And again, you can see your period on the table by finding your start and your end points. And then on the graph from same thing, how long it takes for it to start and end. And then our amplitude is the distance because of the points that we're using between these two points or any two points on here. And then the distance from your midline to your max or your midline to a min. We can use this information to write a function based on a graph. So I would find the same pieces of information and work backwards to find the function. So go ahead and pause the video and try that. Looking at this graph, I notice that I have an amplitude of 3 because that's the distance from the midline to the minimum or the maximum. I notice that it starts at 0 here and goes to 1. I can tell that's a common point to a common point, so that's my period. So my period is going to be 1, which I need to use that to find omega. So I set the period, which is 1 equal to 2 pi over omega, and solve for omega, which is also going to be 2 pi. And I also noticed that at x equals 0, it's starting at its maximum here. So that means it's going to be a positive cosine graph. So I end up with y equals my amplitude that has not been reflected, so 3, positive cosine graph of 2 pi x. So here is your function. There's actually an infinite number of ways to write the function for this based on uh, tr horizontal translations. This could also be a translated sine graph. But usually I just go with the most basic one, which is the least amount of translations possible.